So far, we've looked at reactions of several carbonyl-containing compounds, such as oxidation of an aldehyde. We looked at the reduction of both aldehydes and ketones. And then we looked at the conversion of a carboxylic acid to an ester. In this video, we are going to look at how we can convert a carboxylic acid to an amide, and that's going to be the focus of this video. So we are looking at reactions of carboxylic acids. And when we talked about ester formation, um, we talked about these being substitution reactions. And they are substitution reactions because this OH here on your carboxylic acid is being replaced with, in the case of ester formation, an oxygen-containing group. And that's what forms your ester product. And now with amide formation, we're still going to replace this OH group. That's why it's still a substitution reaction. But we're substituting it with a nitrogen-containing compound. And that is what's going to result in our amide product. There are a couple of differences between the two. You're going to notice that um, for ester formation, this reaction requires um, acid. And for amide formation, this reaction is going to um, require heat. But many of the other elements are going to be the same, where the OH and the H of your reactant, in the case of the ester formation, it was with an alcohol. So the OH and the H will pair up so that you can form water. And now your carbonyl carbon is able to bond to the heteroatom of your reactant. In this case, it's an oxygen. For amide formation, the mechanism will be the same. This OH and this H were, are going to combine to form water. And now that carbonyl carbon is able to form a bond with the heteroatom of your other reactant, which in this case for amide formation, it's a nitrogen. Let's look at this amide reaction in just a little bit more detail, and then we will establish some terminology along the way. Okay, so amide formation, another word for this type of reaction is called amidation, and you will hear me use this word um, throughout the video. All right, so in amidation reactions, it is important that your nitrogen-containing reactant has, an, has a hydrogen available here um, that it can combine with the OH of your carboxylic acid. If this hydrogen is not available here, then this OH group will not be able uh, to come off your carbonyl carbon. Okay. So in the reaction I'm showing here, we do have that hydrogen available. So your OH and the H will combine, and that's going to form your water. And then that's great. Now the carbonyl carbon can combine with this nitrogen uh, from your uh, other reactant. And this is your amide bond, where your nitrogen has at least one of the groups is a carbonyl carbon. That's what's going to make this an amide rather than an amine, which is what we've been talking about. So what this means is that you are going to be able to have several different types of reactants here with a nitrogen, but some will not react because of this hydrogen requirement. So let's look at that. So one of the reactants that will react is going to be ammonia. Recall that ammonia just means you have nitrogen and all of the groups attached to it are going to be hydrogens. So anytime we use the word ammonia, this is the compound we're referring to. Now, primary amines will also be able to react to form amides. That is because in a primary amine, one of the hydrogens will be replaced with a carbon-containing group. I'm showing it here as an R, but the rest will be hydrogens. This is what a primary amine is because we classify it as primary when the nitrogen is bonded to just one other carbon-containing group, as shown here. So this is going to be a primary amine. That means there is a hydrogen available in order uh, to bind to, um, in order to bond to the OH group to carry out the reaction. Likewise, a secondary amine, same idea. For a secondary amine, you will have one and two carbon containing groups, but you will still have that hydrogen available. So what this means that is that a tertiary amine will not be able to react in this reaction. That's because it has one, two, and three carbons. That's what makes it tertiary. And therefore, there are no hydrogens available here. So this one will not um, be able to react. OK, so the type of amide that forms, meaning the type of product that forms in this kind of reaction, will depend on the reactant type, meaning it will depend whether you have ammonia, primary, or secondary. So what this means is that when an ammonia reacts, you're going to get a primary amide. And we're going to look at the details of these reactions in just a minute. So when ammonia reacts, you will get a primary amide because this hydrogen will come off and it will be replaced with a carbonyl carbon. So it's getting replaced with a carbon-containing group. 
and that's going to make it a primary. And as we continue, again, when this hydrogen is removed in a primary amine, you will have two carbon containing groups bound to that nitrogen now. And so that means it's secondary and it's an amide because one of those new carbon containing groups is a carbonyl group. And that's the definition of an amide. Okay. And as we continue, you'll see this will give you a tertiary amide. And here you will not get a compound. So let's look at this in more detail. Okay, so at the very top, I have acetic acid. This acetic acid is reacting with ammonia because this nitrogen is bound to three other hydrogens. So that makes it ammonia. Now, how this reaction proceeds is this OH group leaves and this hydrogen um, also leaves here and that's going to form your water. So this means that now this nitrogen can bind to this carbon here. And so that is this bond being formed. And if you look at this nitrogen now in your amide, because there's a carbonyl carbon here, you're going to notice that there's just one other carbon group bound to that nitrogen. Just one other. There are two hydrogens there. That's going to make it primary. Let's look at the second reaction. Now I have methylamine as a reactant rather than ammonia. And the difference here is that now I have one of the hydrogens uh, substituted in with a carbon containing group. So this is going to make it a primary amine. This is a primary. Again, same reaction OH and H will come together to form water. And then this nitrogen can now form a bond with carbon. That's this bond here. So if we look at the nitrogen in my amide product, now I have one carbon bound to it and then another carbon bound to that. So that means I now have a secondary amide. So that is how you can go from a primary amine, that reacting with a carboxylic acid, and therefore now you have a secondary amide. With acetic acid and dimethylamine, again, dimethylamine has one and two carbons attached to it, so it's going to be a secondary amine. Again, the OH and the H will leave together to form water, and then this nitrogen bonds to the carbon. And what you get um, on, as a product, an amide product, is going to be a tertiary, because you initially had two carbons bound to that nitrogen, and now in the reaction, this nitrogen picked up another uh, carbon-containing group, which is a carbonyl, and that's how it makes it a tertiary. So if you look at this nitrogen here, it has one, and then here it has two methyl groups. The two subscript here is telling you that you have two CH3 groups which are methyl groups, and that means this nitrogen has a total of three carbons bound to it. Let's go ahead and apply this to predict uh, re um, products in, in a couple of reactions. Okay. So we need to predict the product here. As with all reactions, the very first thing that we do is identify our functional groups. That is going to tell you what kind of reactions are possible. Okay, so in the very first uh, compound, I see I have COOH. We talked about in uh, previously that this condensed uh, structure means a carboxylic acid. So what this compound here is, I'm going to start drawing this carbon here. So I have a carbon. That one is double bonded to this oxygen here. And then there's another oxygen bonded to that carbon, which is then in turn uh, bonded to this hydrogen. That's what that COOH means. That means that then the rest of the molecule will come off this this uh, carbon, and you can just write that in. Okay, so this is what one of my reactants looks like, and this is my carboxylic acid. So I know it's going to be some sort of carboxylic acid reaction. Now I look at my other reactant. I see that I have a nitrogen, and I'm going to draw this out just so we can keep track of all of our um, atoms. So I have nitrogen, that's bonded to a hydrogen, and then I see that I have a methyl group, and I have two of them. Those are going to have to be bound to my nitrogen because nitrogen needs to have three bonds in order to satisfy the octet rule. So this is my other reactant. Okay, so now I also see that I have some heat. And again, this is classic of a, an amidation reaction. All right, so if I'm going to perform an amidation reaction, I am going to need to have a hydrogen on my nitrogen reactant, my nitrogen containing reactant. And I see that I do have a hydrogen here. And I need that hydrogen because I need to be able to grab that hydrogen and this OH to form H2O. So that's going to be one of my products. And then I can take care of the rest. Okay, so if my OH was removed, what I have remaining is this carbonyl containing compound, CH3, CH2, CH2. And I will draw everything in in just a moment. So I've removed my OH, so I will need to give that carbonyl carbon some bonds, but I'm just going to draw in the compounds that I have remaining. 
first. Okay, so I removed that OH and I removed the H from my nitrogen containing compound. So this means that um, what's going to happen is this nitrogen needs a third bond. It's going to want to bond to this carbonyl carbon. And so I'm actually just going to go ahead and write that together. This means that this carbonyl is going to bond to this nitrogen here. And then don't forget to add in your methyl groups. And that is why you get this type of uh, product. This product is going to be a type of amide because of the nitrogen bonded to a carbonyl group. And then, so this is a nitrogen bonded to a carbonyl group that makes it an amide. And then I can determine whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary. And then I count one, two, three carbons bound to that. So that's going to be tertiary. Okay, let's do another example. I see I have a carboxylic acid group over here on my left-hand side. And then I notice that my other reactant contains a nitrogen and it's a type of amine. This particular amine is going to be primary. And that is because there are two hydrogens bound to that nitrogen, meaning there's only one carbon group bound to that. And so we classify that as primary. Okay, so the important thing here though, is that this nitrogen contains at least one hydrogen that can be um, bonded to this OH group of my carboxylic acid. So that means that one of these hydrogens is going to come off. So I'm going to write a one under it to remind myself that there is still a hydrogen that remains there. So that one hydrogen that did come off is going to bind to this OH. And so that's how I make H2O. Now I'm going to have what remains, which is this CH2. Okay, so that's my carbonyl carbon. And then over here, I'm going to add my nitrogen containing group, which now formed a bond with that carbonyl. So now I'm writing my nitrogen in, and then I can go ahead and add everything else um, that's bonded to that nitrogen. So I have one hydrogen left over here, and then this cyclic component. And that's it. That's how you can write your amidation reaction. Okay. Again, this is an amide, and specifically, it's going to be a secondary amide because I have one carbon and two carbons bound to it. So that is how you can form amides. So that is called an amidation reaction. But now we can go in the reverse direction, which is called amide hydrolysis. So just as we did with esters, even though we could form esters, we could also break those ester bonds. And we're going to do the same thing with amides. This is going to be called amide hydrolysis. Hydro, again, is going to mean water. Lysis means to break. So that means that water is going to be breaking a bond. We saw this with ester hydrolysis, where we first had to locate our, the bond that was going to break in our ester. That was going to be the single uh, carbon-oxygen bond. And then this OR group would come off. It would pair up with this hydrogen in water so that the OH of water um, would, bond, would bond to your carbonyl carbon to form the, the carboxylic acid. So this is how you can go from an ester back to its carboxylic acid form. And then that means that on the other side, because we had an OR group leave, that is going to bond to that hydrogen of water, and that's going to make an OH group, which is an alcohol. So with amides, it's going to be the same mechanism. Here, instead, the amide bond is going to break. That's going to be the bond between the carbonyl carbon and nitrogen. And then this NH2 group will leave and pair up with the hydrogen of your water so that this OH group can now bond to the carbonyl carbon to make that carboxylic acid. So basically, this NH2 group here was replaced with the OH from water. Just like in ester, the OR group gets replaced with the OH of water. Then one of the other products in an amide hydrolysis reaction is going to be an amine con uh, nitrogen-containing compound. In the example here, this is going to be ammonia, since it's only hydrogens that are bound to your nitrogen. Okay. Let's look at the two um, conditions in which this hydrolysis can take place. When we talked about ester hydrolysis, we talked about the hydrolysis in acidic conditions and under basic conditions. When we talked about esters, we had to consider our carboxylic acid um, uh, product under these conditions, meaning, let's just go back really quickly, when we made a carboxylic acid, notice we're going to make this in both ester and amide reactions. And when we did this hydrolysis under acidic conditions, we had to consider what would happen to our carboxylic acid. Under acidic conditions, nothing would happen, so that H is going to be here. 
but we learned that under basic conditions, that acidic hydrogen, that's part of your carboxylic acid, this one here, would come off and uh, would come off as a proton, leaving a negative charge behind. The same thing is going to happen with amide hydrolysis. Since in amide hydrolysis, we are also making a carboxylic acid. So that is a consideration we will need to have in mind when we're thinking about acidic or basic conditions in our hydrolysis reactions. But there's an additional consideration here for amide hydrolysis because we're making ammonia. Unlike in esters where we made alcohol and we didn't have to consider um, acids or bases reacting with the alcohol, here we will need to consider acids and bases, or specifically acids, reacting with ammonia because ammonia can react with acids as well. So let's look at, um, at how uh, the details of that reaction. Okay, so I'm starting out under acidic conditions and I have an amide here. It's an amide because of this functional group here. Okay, so this is going to react with water and I am under acidic conditions. So what this means is the first thing we're going to do since it is a hydrolysis is identify the bond that is going to break. This bond is going to be replaced, this NHCH3 is going to be replaced with OH. So I'm going to draw the products here, these intermediate products first, just so that we can see, keep track of our um, compounds. Okay, so here I've replaced NHCH3 with OH. And then the other product that is made is this group that has left. And I'm just going to draw it out so we can see all of the components. So that's this underlined group here. And then that picked up a hydrogen from water. Okay, great. This is how you would break that bond. But you have to consider how your two products are going to interact with the acid that is present in your solution. So ammonia does have these lone pairs here. This nitrogen has lone pairs that it can accept a proton. And there are a lot of protons in my solution because I have acid in my solution. So this means that um, this compound here is going to pick up a proton. And that is how we get to this uh, reactant, this uh, product here, where now my nitrogen has an additional proton here on top, giving it that uh, positive charge shown here. So I would recommend that when you're doing these reactions, you first just write out the products that you know you're going to get, and then consider, I have an acid in my, in my solution, how is that going to interact with my products? With the ammonia, or the amine in this case, it will take up a proton, but your carboxylic acid will remain unchanged because this is not going to react with your acid. Let's contrast this with a base. So if you're carrying out the same hydrolysis reaction, but now under basic conditions, we're going to have to consider what the, what the, um, what the base will do to our product. Right? But first, you always break your amide bond. That means we are going to make, I'm going to draw the intermediates here, COO, triple bond there. And then I've broken this NH2 bond to replace it with OH. And then that means NH and H. This is the group that left here. And now I'm going to add a hydrogen there from the water. So these are my products, but I'm under basic conditions. So what this means is that my carboxylic acid will react with the base that's in my solution. The ammonia, however, drawn here, will not because it doesn't react with bases. So that is why you're going to have ammonia as one of your products, but then your carboxylic acid is going to have um, a hydrogen that is removed or a proton that is removed and a negative charge is left behind. And this is how you form your carboxylate anion, which was uh, similar in, for the uh, ester hydrolysis that we talked about. Now, because there are metal cations in your solution, this is also going to form a salt. And that's why this Na plus is here. So this is how you can think about what kind of products you're going to make under acidic or basic conditions. It's just first writing out the products that you will get and then considering if any one of your products will react further with either the acid in your solution or the base in your solution. Let's apply these concepts. Okay, we're going to predict the hydrolysis product of the following reaction under acidic conditions. Okay, first identify your product, your reactants. I see I have an amide here, and then I have water. They have told me it's acidic conditions, and I'm performing a hydrolysis. So I'm going to have to break some bonds, and the water is going to be breaking those bonds. So the bond that I will break is this nitrogen then that means that I will replace 
that group. I have that, CH2, CH3. Okay, so now this group is going to leave and it will be replaced with water. So I'm just going to rewrite water here just to keep track of it. OH is going to come here and interact and uh, bond to the carbonyl carbon. And then the group that leaves is this NHCH3. I'm going to just draw it out so we can see everything that's going on. Okay, and then it's going to pick up a hydrogen from water. So I'm going to add that other hydrogen to my nitrogen. Okay, this is the first step. I've broken my bond and I've put all the hydrogens that need to go where they need to be and added the OH to the carbonyl. Now I'm under acidic conditions. So I need to think, will my carboxylic acid product react with acid? That's gonna be a no, it doesn't. But then does my uh, primary amine on this side, does that react with acid? And the answer is yes, because of those lone pairs up on nitrogen. So this means that this uh, amine re uh, product is going to pick up that proton. So now it's gonna form a hydrogen bond and it's also going to pick up a positive charge. Now they didn't specify what kind of um, acid I have here, so I don't know what the anion is. So at this point, you are done drawing your, your reaction. Let's go ahead and do this under basic conditions. Here's another reaction. I identify the bond I need to break and also remember that I'm under basic conditions. So I'm going to break this bond between the carbonyl carbon and my nitrogen. And then that means I will make, this is one of the products I will make. And then um, that means that from my water, this OH group will come here and replace this nitrogen containing group. And then what comes off is this nitrogen with these substituents. And then it is also going to pick up this hydrogen. Okay. Now I'm under basic conditions. So I have to consider which product will react with the base further. In this case, it's going to be my carboxylic acid because this hydrogen here is acidic. So that means the base is going to take that proton and it's going to leave behind that negative charge. And this is your classic acid-base reaction here. So really, this is the kind of product that I have made. I make my carboxylate anion, anion. And over here, I have made basically a secondary amine. In the product up top, I'm actually going to rename this I'm going to call it an alkyl ammonium ion because it's an ion, alkyl. And the type of ion that it is is a nitrogen containing, which is why it has ammonium, and alkyl because that nitrogen is bound to at least one other carbon. Okay. So this is how you can predict the products of hydrolysis reactions for, um, for amide hydrolysis specifically under either acidic conditions or basic conditions. And again, the first step is just draw your products and then consider which one of your products will react further with the acid or the base, and then you can make the modifications. And that will conclude all of the reactions that we will consider for carbonyl-containing compounds.